Let's talk. It's currently 3, 4 a.m. 3, 4 a.m. Why did I just say it like that? Alright, so I was waiting to do this video after Spider-Man No Way Home. I originally had this idea about 9 months ago, kind of around the time my first commentary video was released. But finally, the movie has released, guys. Yes, it released, I think, like 3 days ago. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it was 3 days ago. Anyways... I'm going to be doing three categories, speed, agility, strength, okay, I, why did I say it like that too, strength, now I chose these categories because that's what you think about when you think about Spider-Man, it's Spider-Man's main abilities, so we're not talking about his suit or his hair, just what mostly represents Spider-Man as a hero, alright, fuck, Jesus Christ, come on. Now, Toby's representation of Spider-Man is a lot more iconic than Tom Holland's or Andrew Garfield's, mainly because of this iconic train scene. That train that you guys just saw approximately weighed 82,000 pounds. So the force that... <laughs> okay, so the force that Toby would have to put on that train would be at least 326,000 pounds. Keep in mind, the train was going at least 110 miles per hour. So Toby Spider-Man can probably lift on base 120,000 pounds. That's my very short estimate on it, guys, though. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, it really can be more. It truly can be more. Alright, now Tom Holland. Tom Holland's Spider-Man is by no means weak. Matter of fact, he had an even more impressive strength feat by lifting up 3,000 tons, which in pounds, in 3,000 tons, in pounds, is a whopping 6 million pounds. He's also fought the Goblin, which is a better overall hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Overall, guys, this is just me in general. Overall, I think Tom's Spider-Man can lift more than Toby's Spider-Man. You know, this isn't gonna exactly get him to destroy Toby Spider-Man just because he's slightly stronger and can lift more. This isn't necessarily make him stronger, just makes him able to lift more than Toby's, I guess. I don't know what's going on with me. I can see that. I can. I, I believe you. Strange. Power. I feel like I got so much. I got so much anger. I can see that. I can see you don't want to be here. I can see you're scared. I can see you don't know what's happening to you. I can see that you don't want to hurt anybody. It's gonna be all right. Got a clear shot. Standing by. I don't want them shooting me. I'm gonna shoot you. You guys, this is my buddy Max. I told you about Max. No one shoots him, Max. Andrew Garfield is by no means a softy. He's lifted a car up before. Anyways, your average car is three thousand pounds. Just. <laughs> to 6,000 pounds, but all intents and purposes, for all intents and purposes, I should say, let's say Andrew Garfield's car is 6,000 pounds, all right, so that's a decent amount of weight, uh, so, so, uh, he would have had to, yeah, fuck it, man, I mean, anyways, long story short, Andrew is the weakest Spider-Man, Tom Holland takes this one. So, let's start off with Andrew Garfield, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man has, what the fuck, man, why did my fucking video just stop? Alright, so Andrew Garfield Spider-Man has been able to outrun Electro's Lightning, but how exactly fast is Electro's Lightning? Now look, Electro's Lightning definitely got faster after No Way Home. His original Lightning was only about 400 to 300 miles per hour. Now since his mofo went Super Saiyan mode, he definitely got much faster and much stronger. Long story short, his Lightning is Lightning. His Lightning definitely travels up to Mach 3 or more, and Andrew Garfield was able to keep up with him, guys. Yes, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was able to keep up with him, but did end up getting hit. This basically means that Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man travels up to 62 miles or more. Again, it's kind of a very rough number to kind of put against Andrew Garfield, but it's close enough, I guess. Uh, now, I guess let's move over to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Alright, so Tom Holland's Spider-Man has never been the one to be fast, right? But he did manage to keep up with the Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming. And the Vulture's exact speed in the MCU is 100 miles per hour. Which means he's not the fastest, but he's definitely fast enough to outfly Andrew's Spider-Man by a lot. And Tom Holland's Spider-Man was able to keep up with him for a fair amount of time. Which means... 
Tom Holland Spider-Man can at least go 45 miles per hour or 56 miles per hour. I say he's slower than Andrew Spider-Man because Andrew Spider-Man was literally dodging lightning. I mean, this dude made bullets look like nothing. Literally nothing. Toby Spider-Man was able to dodge many of Doc Ock's hits and the goblins. Now, Goblin can travel up to 90 miles or more. Doc Ock's tentacles at least reach 8 feet and can extend them to 45 feet, as we saw in the original Spider-Man 2. Toby Spider-Man has also dodged many of Doc Ock's hits when Doc Ock was right by him. And how exactly fast does Doc Ock's tentacles go? Well, it's never exactly been measured, but at least 100 miles or more. <clears throat> Rough estimate. So basically... Without making the video one hour long, Toby Spider-Man can go 60 miles per hour. Anyways, I think it's without a doubt, Andrew Garfield takes this one. Okay, agility. So basically that means who lasts longer. Weird way to say it, but yeah. Toby has been able to fight with Doc Ock for over 10 minutes doing the same thing back to back with the Goblin. But nowadays, that's not happening, okay? It's just not. He's way too fucking old. It's all about, you know, his back. My, My back! back. <laughs> Andrew Garfield Spider-Man has been able to dodge Electro's lightning numerous times. And he has dodged the bullets for breathics, alright? That's just the complete truth. But speed has nothing to do with agility. Matter of fact, the faster you are, the faster you're gonna fall. And in this case, that's very true. Now look, fighting with Doc Ock for over 10 minutes is impressive. But fighting Thanos and his entire army is arguably more impressive, okay? Come on. And fighting Captain America for a while and managing to overpower him is even more impressive. I mean, at the at this point, Andrew would just be trash, right? I mean, there's nothing. he's nothing in comparison to Toby or Tom Holland. Anyways, Tom Holland wins. Now look, now look. I do not want any fucking Tobey Maguire fans to be hating on me. Because I'm a fucking Tobey Maguire fan. So that would just be weird. Okay. Originally, it was supposed to be Tom Holland. Alright? Alright, I mean, it was supposed to be Tobey Maguire, right? Alright? So, originally, it was not supposed to be Tom Holland. It was supposed to be Tobey Maguire. But after watching No Way Home, I mean, come on. Now, obviously, if you put the two together, I think Tobey would definitely beat him. But that's for a different video, right? I don't know. It's up to you guys, kind of, I guess. Because I couldn't really... I'm not going to really judge this. This isn't like a versus versus match. This is kind of like a who's just the best in general. Who's the better interpretation? Who's the strongest? But not who can really win in the fight. That's a different video. I don't feel like you can measure these two Spider-Men. Or these three, I should say. Forgot. I almost left out Andrew Garfield. Sorry. Uh, um, I don't think you could just judge these three based off, you know, what they're good at. Because they're all good at their certain things. They're all good at what they do, right? That's without a doubt. Uh, if you guys want to talk about who's the who's the best Spider-Man out of the three, like, in their movies, I'll probably do that in my next video. But right now, I currently, I mean, I currently, it's currently 3 a.m. So I'm just going to fucking go to bed in a little bit after I'm not editing this video. <laughs> my back. Oh, my back.